today I'm making a mixed media gothic arch and this is for a monthly prompt that's running in the UK Stampers Forum on Facebook. Um, it's not a swap, we're not swapping them, but each month there's going to be a theme and we're uploading projects that we've made on that theme. And the theme for this month is wings. Now there is a template available for a gothic arch um, if, if you're not sure how to go about making one. I've made mine um, with a Sizzix die. This is the Tim Holtz arch frame and I've just cut this out of a piece of grey board because it makes a nice sturdy base. And I've also cut out some grey board cogs because I want to add those to the background. And that's also a Sizzix die. That one is the Tim Holtz Industrial and, and I've cut some of those out of, of my grey board as well. And I'm just going to glue those onto my base piece and then I'm going to cover them with a coat of gesso and apply a paint finish and then go on to embellish and, and go along with the wings theme that we've got to, to follow this month. This is just some Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue that I've decanted into one of these small bottles. A few of you have asked where I get them from. Um, they are the Woodwear Ultra Fine Tip Applicators and they're quite easily available if you Google that. Uh, there's a couple of other companies that make them. I know Styx 2 do something very, very similar here in the UK as well. But they're, they're really inexpensive. They're easy to refill. And this fine, this really, really fine nozzle um, allows for a sort of good, fine application of glue and you don't need a lot of this cosmic shimmer glue it's really strong um, so this is a good way of avoiding waste and avoiding having too much glue which then just oozes out everywhere and makes a mess of your project so i'm just going to carry on and stick these in place and then i'll be back with the gesso and we'll give it a coat of gesso Right, now those are glued in place and I've just I've trimmed any that were overhanging with a knife because I don't want them to extend beyond the side of this. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them, whether they're going to get mounted into a, a journal or maybe I'll attach them and make a little book with them. I don't know, but I know I don't want any bits hanging over the edge, so I've trimmed those off. And I've got my Pabio black gesso here. And I'm just going to give it all a coat of black gesso and then set it aside to dry. Okay, so my base arch is, is dry. I've given it a coat of gesso on the back as well and dried that. And I've popped it in a box here because I'm going to spray it um, with some of these Cosmic Shimmer Mists. These are a mica spray. I'm using Aqua Lagoon and Plum Twist. Um, there's lots of different mica sprays on the market and they'll all work in the same way. Just need to give them a good to shake up before we start. And then just going to spray them randomly just to add some colour and shimmer. And I'm just going to heat that um, with my tool just to dry it off. But you can, you can see possibly in there. I don't want to pick it up, I'll get it all over my hands. As you can see there, you get this beautiful oil on water effect. I love where the colours mix together and blend and you get all these different tones. And it, it's just, it's such a pretty effect. So I like that, it's really nice, but I want to highlight this texture in the background a little bit more. And I'm going to use some gilding waxes to do that. And I'm going to use some Inca Gold. I've got turquoise and magenta because I thought those two colours um, are a, a good match for the two sprays that I've used. So it'll just highlight the colours that I've already got on there without having to add any extra colours in. And I'm just applying lightly with my fingertips and it'll just bring out the texture and highlight those die cut cogs that we've put on there. I'm also going to add a little bit around the edge and that'll just frame it. 
you only need a little tiny bit really a little goes such a long way with these waxes and you can always add more if you feel that you need a little bit more And I like to just take um, a soft cloth, this is just like one of those uh, kitchen cloths, a J cloth, and just give it a little buff. And this will remove any excess that, that you might, that might be lying on there that you could smudge. And it just helps bring out the shine a bit. It almost burnishes it into the piece that you've done. So as you can see there, we've still got, we've got all that beautiful iridescence from the mica sprays and then this metallic highlight shine from those gilding waxes. And it, it really is, it's so pretty. There's the blues and, and the purples and pinks. There's like a green tone in there. It's, it's really, really nice. I hope that this is, it's captured on the camera. It's very difficult to, to see how well it, it works when you're filming it. Now, as I said, the, the theme for this month's, um, it's not exactly a challenge, but for, for our prompt is wings. And I'm going to use this set of stamps from Visible Image called Glimmer of Light. And it's got this moth and the light bulb, and I'm going to try and arrange those on, I think. I really like the detail in these stamps. So today I'm going to stamp with my Jet Black Archiver link because I think I'm going to use um, a water-soluble method for colouring. I'm not entirely sure. I might use my scribble sticks or I might watercolour, but if I use this ink, I know it's waterproof and it's not going to move if I do decide to colour in that way. So yeah, I think I'm going to use, this is the set two of the scribble sticks, the Dean Awakely Media scribble sticks. These are a, a little more earthy colours, a little more subtle than the original set, which was, um, by comparison, they were sort of a brighter range, more neons the first ones. But I think this colourway will work better. And to tie in with the the blues and greens and purples. I think I'm going to use similar colorways and I'm just going to put some color on and then I'm going to blend it out with a water brush afterwards. The good thing about these is you don't have to be too careful because the blending really, it does itself, it's, it's really good. So that was the peacock colour, this is eggplant. I'm going to use cheddar on the body. I'm 
I'm going to leave that skull design white. I think I'm going to add a little olive. And I'll just get my paintbrush. And just with a wet brush, just going to blend that colour out. I really do love these scribble sticks. The, the colours stay really vibrant, they blend really easily. They are one of my favourite water-soluble crayons. I'm just rinsing my brush in between going into the different colours just so as not to muddy them up too much. And that's such a quick and simple way to add some colour. I'm thinking I might just add a little of this marine, which is a real deep blue in the middle, just for a bit of shading in there, I think. And just along that edge of the wing. So that's really quick and easy bit of colouring. I'll just dry that off with my heat tool and then I can cut it out. Now if like me you're not very good at cutting out neatly, I sometimes find it easier just to leave a very narrow white border rather than trying to cut out exactly on the line. Now that's in, it's entirely up to you, it's personal preference. If you're happy to cut along the line and can do it neatly, then go ahead and do that. But I always struggle. I don't know why. I think it's because I'm left-handed. And I'm not going to use that as, as an excuse, but I, I'm left-handed and I use right-handed scissors. I, I don't like left-handed scissors. I think having spent my whole life using right-handed ones, left-handed ones just don't suit me. But I do feel that that does contribute to why I do struggle to cut things out very neatly along the line but it just seems to suit me better to leave a very narrow border as I'm cutting out and I'm always happier with the finish when I do that so there we go that's cut out that coordinates really nicely with the colors I think that we've got on here what I'm going to do though is, is obviously I've left this edge I'm just going to go around the edge with some distress ink just to darken down that white a bit. I just think the white, it's a little bit bright for the rest of the piece. So here's my Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. And I'm just going to go around the edge and around where the antenna are just to dull down that whiteness a little bit. And I will apologise if you can hear any back, sort of background noise. It's the bank holiday Easter weekend 
The neighbour's children are out in the garden, I can hear those playing. And there's a gentleman across the, the way that is working on his extension, so I keep hearing some hammering. I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to hear that or not, but if you do hear any strange noises, that's what it is. It's a typical British Easter bank holiday weekend, except it's not raining yet. So there, that's just, just taken away some of that brightness away, I think. And that looks looks a lot better. I'm a lot happier with that. So I'll just clear these things out of the way for now. And then uh, I'll come back and we'll get on to the next stage. Right, so next I want to stamp the light bulb that was also in the, the set of stamps, the visible image set of stamps. And once again, I'm going to use my Jet Black Archival, stamp onto a piece of white card. I don't need the full length of the, the cable for the bulb, but I thought, well, I may as well stamp it and then we can trim it to fit. The light bulb, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of a, a yellow colour to it and that'll be all that's needed. Again, I'll use these scribble sticks and we'll use the cheddar colour that we used on the body of the moth. So we'll just dry that off and then I think I'm going to heat emboss that so that it's shiny, so that it looks like it's a glass bulb. Right, so that's now dry. I'm going to stamp, basically, oh, I'm cutting this out, so I'm going to stamp all over this area with my clear Versamark ink pad and then emboss it with clear embossing powder. I think actually I'm going to stamp, I'm going to emboss the cable as well. And this is just a, a huge pot of clear embossing powder, sprinkling it over the top, tap off the excess and say it doesn't matter that we've got embossing powder all over because we're cutting this out. It's a lot easier to do it this way than to try and hold a, a fiddly piece that you've already cut out. So we'll just heat that to melt it. And as you can see, that's nice and glossy now. And we'll just tip that back into the pot and put that away. I get asked where I got this from and this was given to me by a friend. Um, it's a Stampenda stamp and stuff clear embossing powder. I don't know if they still make it in this big tubs or not. As I say, it was a gift um, from a friend and I've just got, this is a wooden spoon that I had in a, it was in a subscription box but it's absolutely perfect for just scooping this out and sprinkling it. So now that's cooled down, I'm going to cut it out. So I can now decide whereabouts I'm going to place this and I can then trim it um, to fit. So 
So I think it's, I think I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to add a little glue to the back again. Now as the surface of my arch is uneven because I've got the die cuts on, you could use like a silicon glue, but this Cosmic Shimmer Acrylic Glue is really strong so where it does make contact it, it will hold it and to be fair I think it's going to hold it absolutely fine. Just hold it in place for a moment until it um, sticks. And then I can trim the excess of that away. I'm still thinking my moth's a bit bright, so I'm I think I'm gonna go over it with the grey distressing just to dull it down a little bit. I do like the colours that I've used, but I just feel it's it's a little bit too vibrant for the feeling that I'm trying to create here. Yeah, I'm happier with that. I do like this hickory smoke. I mean, you can do the same with the black ink, but sometimes black can be a little harsh. And the, the hickory smoke is it's a proper it's a true grey as opposed to the, the pumice stone is a warm grey, so it's got a very brown tone to it. But this one I do find is a good alternative to black, where black would be a little bit too harsh. So I think I'm going to add a little shape to the wings, and I will possibly be trimming this wing I'm not sure I might leave it in place for now um, mainly because if I was going to bind this as a book it would be bound on this side so anything hanging over the edge that side would be all right it won't be in the way um, I'm not sure but yeah I think I'm going to I'm going to attach it with the body there and leave the wings overhanging a little for now And as always, I'm going to finish the piece off with some Tim Holtz words. Um, good old Tim Holtz and his ideology range, absolutely perfect for mixed media people. This is the Halloween set of clipping stickers. These are the ones that are taken from um, actual text from books, which is why they're in different fonts. Um, but the Halloween set I quite I quite like. It's not just for Halloween, but they are, there's some unusual phrases in there which are just really nice. So we're going to have the light flickered in the darkness, I think, which just suits this perfectly. And just decide where they're going to go. I think they're going to go there. I think I'm going to help these down with a bit of glue, even though they are adhesive. As I say, this is not a flat surface that I'm popping them onto, so I don't want them to just drop off or, or get knocked off. So I'll just apply a bit of glue. And that just makes sure that they're secure. 
and so here we have the finished gothic arch a really nice um, iridescent effect that we got with the mica sprays and the gilding wax uh, beautiful soft colouring with the scribble sticks and then the distress inks we've got a little bit of shine there with the embossing and just finished off with those Tim Holtz words so I hope you enjoyed um, this little video today don't forget to check out the links below if you want to pop over to the UK Stampers Forum. You don't have to be UK based to join the group. Um, the ATC and Inchi swaps that we do in the group are for UK based people. But there are other swaps that you can take part in if you live overseas. And obviously this Gothic Arch swap, it, it's not a swap as such. We're just sharing our inspiration in a folder. So wherever in the world you happen to be, you're, you're able to join in with that one. So I'll put the link for that in the description below. So if you enjoyed the video, as always, please leave me a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.